what if you have a system that is like a free standing system that just blows out the outlet of it? Because every now and then you see that, or I'll see electric furnaces in trailer homes that don't have ductwork you can test in. Is there any way you can adapt and overcome in that situation, or are you just kind of out of luck with static pressure? At that point in time, if you don't have any type of duct, you're really limited with what you've got. You really are. Now, to be careful with some situations, say, for instance, we're talking about a mobile home. If there's a louver door that's covering that air handler up, you know, where the filter just sits on top and it's a downflow, then the louver door is actually a return grill in that cavity. You'd be amazed how much pressure drop louver doors have across them, especially after somebody paints them a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So it's all about how that system normally operates that's going to determine where you can take those measurements. And, of course, what you're looking for. So not only, you know, we t generally tend to use static pressure as a very generic term, but there's, you're looking at external static pressure, which is the total resistance that the blower is trying to work against. You've also got pressure drops, pressure drops of coils, pressure drops of filters, even pressure drops of different duct fittings. So as you get into diagnostics, external static pressure tells you kind of the overall air side health of the system. But those different pressure drops help you find out what the cause of the rest restriction is. Just uh, kind of going back to what uh, Bill and I were talking about, because we were talking about true flow grid before this. So if you're using static pressure for measuring CFM, is it more for diagnostic purposes and less for that precise information? Because true flow, it's like here's you have 891 CFM, and it's going to be pretty close to that. But static, of course, not going to be as close because you're going off a table. So should you think yeah. of it like troubleshooting and less like I'm going to measure capacity and use this measurement? Have, it's a good place to start, especially if you're a technician getting into it because the cost of entry isn't that bad. But with any airflow measurement, there's always going to be pros and cons. And one of the cons of using external static pressure in the fan tables is we talked about the turbulence and the inlet and outlet conditions. Uh, the other thing is system cleanliness. If you've got a dirty blower wheel, I mean, it can throw your measurements off to 30, up to 30%. So it is, there are some of the drawbacks. However, I would encourage you not to let that discourage you from taking the measurements because that's the only way that you're going to get any type of momentum taking them is to start going out, testing them, get an idea. And with airflow, it is probably the most difficult thing to try to measure in an HVAC system. It's always in flux. It's always moving. There's always turbulence. So this is why we have plus or minus certain percentages of errors in our measurements. So there's always different degrees of error when we deal with our measurements. What we're trying to do is estimate. I think that's probably a, a good term to use. We're not truly measuring it when we're plotting airflow. We're estimating what the airflow for the fan is under those conditions. And we're just trying to get close and see. And oftentimes it's nowhere close. It's nowhere close to what we need. So with any measurement, you have to know what you're aiming for. You know, you can't just start pulling out random numbers. You have to know what you're aiming for with any type of airflow measurement. But with static pressure, it does give you a way to look into the air side of the system. And as you mentioned, static pressure measurements really without airflow can be taken drastically out of context. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of imagining coming back to a system that's been neglected for a long period of time and getting those strange, like, low readings, like if a blower yeah. was dirty or something, and trying to discern when is it time to say, well, we have to clean this because you won't know how, what the airflow is until you test it, but you can't test right. it with static pressure until you know if it's clean enough. So, I mean, it's one of the things, like, you have to be a be maintaining this thing every year or is there just a point where you say i gotta measure it somehow besides static pressure that's where you document conditions and you can also use other measurement methods uh, in addition to the you mentioned the true flow grid you can also do a duct traverse if you have the same you have a decent straight amount of duct that you can do a duct traverse in there is an added level of difficulty to that it takes practice it's kind of like hitting a baseball there's people that say that it can't be done, you know, hitting a round object with a round object, but for some reason guys get paid millions of dollars yeah. to do it. It can be done, but it takes practice. It's not something that you put an anemometer in somebody's hand and say, go traverse this duck and they're going to have instant success. It's something that you have to practice and get, there are, it, it is an art. 
if you will, to measuring it. Now with the true flow, essentially what it's doing is a duct traverse in the filter rack. And it's compensating for a change in pressures because it's a known resistance and a known area of orifice. So it's doing the calculations on the backside hidden in the app. So they've done a good job of, of figuring all that out. So it aims, it depends on what you're aiming for. If you're using it for troubleshooting purposes, trying to say, you know, hey, am I close? It'll get you close. But if it's dirty, just be aware, an eighth inch of dust on a blower wheel, I think this is in a carrier document, an eighth inch of dust is like a 30% deration in fan capacity. So let's say that you've got a blower that should be moving 1,000 CFM. An eighth inch of dust can drop that down to 700 CFM hmm. of capacity. 